super excited to dive into my gear for 2021. Got uh, all my new stuff, the entire kit. I'm gonna drag it all out and I'm gonna go through everything for you guys. So this pack right here, this is the new um, X-Pack version of the uh, Curve pack from Light AF. Super killer pack. Um, this particular one is 30 liters, which for me is like the perfect size. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos and if you watched the previous videos from this series, then you saw that I've been hiking a lot with the 20 liter multi pack. Um, and I really like that 20 liter size. Um, super comfortable. My kit is dialed down for most three season trips um, where I can use that size pack and I really like it. This pack is the exact same dimensions, but the collar on the pack is taller. So basically I get a 20 liter pack, but I have this extra extension collar where if I wanna start out with more food, I can roll it up or down um, as I see fit. So if I'm adding or taking away things, it just, just gives me that extra space. Of course, super comfortable, Shoulder straps, all light AF packs are known for that. The curve design, um, the side panels are cut in a curve so that they um, hug your back really nice. It's got a ton of features on it. It's got uh, pockets on the shoulder straps. It's got side compression. It's got adjustable water bottle pockets that you can fit two uh, one liter water bottles in. Huge pocket on the back or front of the pack. It's super stretchy and a place to attach a chair or something else that you want to carry on the bottom. So, and I opted for the bottom pocket. So yeah, amazing pack, super lightweight. X-Pack is um, very, very water resistant and it's rigid. So being a frameless pack, it helps um, the pack kind of hold its shape a little bit, especially when you're packing your gear into the pack, which I really like. So I'm stoked on it and Chris did a Great job making it, of course. Everything is flawless. Uh, all the stitching is amazing. And I'm really digging the color choices, the gray and the blue. So, so let's start dragging some stuff out of here. Side pockets. I've got uh, just a standard one liter water bottle. Um, that would be just like your life water bottle, smart water bottle. These are actually whatever these are, Essentia or something like that. I just like them because they're not as tall, um, but they still work with a uh, Sawyer water filter, which is great. Um, and then I also keep in here compostable dog poop bags. You may have seen these in the past. I always hike with these. So if I find something gross on trail that I want to clean up, um, some sort of trash, I can use these to pick it up. I also carry uh, bread bags. So make sure and pick up some trash while you're out hiking. Doesn't have to be a ton. Get what you can, man. It makes a big difference. So moving around, we got the water bottle pockets. And we got the shoulder strap pockets. I have a pair of gloves in here. These are the Showa Timres 281s. These are great for like chilly weather or uh, uh, rain. They're great for that. They're super lightweight, really thin. Um, and you actually still have some dexterity when you're wearing these things, so you can still use your fingers. Um, these are really great for cold, wet weather. I highly recommend them. And everything that I'm pulling out of here, um, everything you're going to see today, I'll have links in the description. If you have any questions um, about anything, please just throw a comment down below or shoot me an email either way, and I will answer every single question as best I can. Um, okay, so let's move around. Let's see. Oh, one more thing. So on this side, I've got a, a separate shoulder pocket. This is actually from Waymark gear. This is just a little stretchy pocket. And inside of here, I have my $5 tripod from Amazon that I've had for a few years now. I use this with my phone to shoot uh, photos and videos. Um, this thing has been great. And I, I forget what it weighs, but it's it's the lightest tripod that I could find. It's, it's super light, so. Okay, 
Coming around to the side. Giant stretch mesh pocket. First thing I have is my rain shell. For this year, I'll be going back to the Montbell Versalite. Great jacket, very breathable, super lightweight. Um, has big pit zips, which is awesome. I had this in some heavy snow recently, just a couple weeks ago, and it did great. Um, so I'm stoked, I'm gonna keep hiking with that. Uh, and sometimes I will carry my rain shell on the, in this bottom pocket, but most recently I've been using this um, almost just for uh, picking up trash. It's awesome when I'm hiking, I can just reach back and you just shove your wrapper or whatever in here. At the end of the day, you just reach in, drag it out of the, the big side um, hole here. But um, yeah, I just shove trash in there as I'm hiking all day and just pack this thing out. Next up, got this guy here. This is a really old piece of uh, ridge rest, actually uh, the old school pads that rolled up from Thermarest. Um, I cut a piece of it off years ago and I sliced it on opposing sides so that it accordions and folds up like that. Or I also sliced it uh, this way so you can fold it either way you want. And uh, yeah, it works pretty good. Great little sit pad. Um, you can set things on it if it's muddy. You can, you know, fan your fire. Uh, lots of good stuff, so that's a great thing to have. Next up, we got my rain skirt. This is from 3FUL. Weighs about two and a half ounces. Costs about ten dollars, twelve dollars. Um, you can find them on Amazon or AliExpress. It's still nylon. It works perfectly for me. Nice ventilation. Uh, it's a Velcro adjustment, you just velcro it around your waist so it's super easy to take it on and off and it makes a great ground sheet if it's like wet and muddy you need a place to set your stuff down so that's a great piece of gear and let's see, next up this is my poop kit so inside of there there's a bottle of hand sanitizer and then uh, there would be toilet, a roll of toilet paper in there but it's empty right now we got my big bag. Go through that in just a second. We got a small piece of car chamois. Um, these things are awesome. They will sop up so much water. It's amazing. And then you just wring them out and they dry super, super fast. Um, you can see this piece right here is only, I don't know, what is that? Like eight inches by eight inches and weighs probably half an ounce, maybe. Um, yeah, really cool thing to have, especially if you use a single wall shelter for condensation and things like that. You can just swipe it right off in the morning and uh, get everything nice and dry before you pack your shelter away. So uh, let's see, tent stakes. Um, I keep my tent stakes on the outside of my pack because if for some reason I was packing everything up and one of these uh, shepherd hook stakes poked out. I, I don't want them to poke a hole in my shelter or something like that. So I just, I just like to keep mine on the outside. Um, this is a Dyneema stake bag from Light AF. And then I have, go ahead and pull these guys out. I have a, a total of eight stakes. Is usually what I carry. So I carry, um, Six shepherd hook stakes. I believe those are six and a half inches long. They're titanium. And then I carry two of the um, V stakes, also titanium. These guys are right there. And I use these for uh, the main tie outs that attach to my uh, the peaks of my shelter where the trekking poles support everything. And then I use the the shepherd hooks for the corners and the head and foot tie out. Next up, what do we got? Water filter. This is my Sawyer Squeeze. This thing's about three or four years old. Um, 
If you saw in the previous video from this series that I tried the micro, don't bother, just stick with the with the squeeze. Um, this guy is what you want, it works great. Like I said, this is going on three, four so years. I don't even know how long I've had it. And um, it just, it works so well, as long as you don't let it freeze. That's why I have this bag here um, over the winter and the colder months. I need to have a bag so I can throw it in and, and I sleep with it, put it inside my quilt, and make sure it doesn't freeze. I keep a smart water bottle cap, sport cap on there. Um, you can take this off, put it onto your water bottle, and then you can uh, backwash. This comes with a big fat plastic syringe when you buy it, but you don't need that. All you need is this guy, and you'll be able to backwash the filter and make sure that it keeps flowing like it should. My Deuce of Spades trowel, um, super ultra light, great for digging cat holes. Um, chops through roots really well. You can use both ends to cut through. I put a little duct tape on the edges here. These are kind of a little sharp. Um, it just makes it a little bit more user friendly for your hands. Um, and this is a cup that I use to scoop water. It's a really shallow water source. I can use this guy, scoop water, crushable, just a little super thin, lightweight, um, water bottle cut off and then it also goes around my trowel just so that my trowel doesn't poke holes in the mesh pocket on my pack um, i don't know that it really would but it's nice to have it on there anyway just in case two more things in here extra straps um, this is uh, these attach to the pack if you would like to create a one inch hip belt. This pack has one inch webbing loops here at the bottom and you can take these uh, straps and attach them with the slick clips and have a one inch webbing belt. I like to have that for two reasons. Um, one, if I end up with a little bit heavier carry than I was expected, um, say with more food or more water or something like that, I can use this to stabilize the pack and take some of the weight off of my hips or I'm sorry, off of my shoulders. Um, and also I have used it to strap my, um, my phone to trees to take video and photos and things like that. Um, so this, these are, have been great for me to have around and they're super lightweight. This is something that I picked up just a few months ago and it has become one of my favorite pieces of gear. Uh, this is a cork massage ball from Rology. And this is actually the smaller one. And when you buy these things, you get two, you get one that's this size and one that's maybe like that, that big around. And I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis for like the last, I don't know, probably eight months. Um, this has been one of the things this little ball and the other ball that have made the biggest difference in my the way my feet feel and starting to heal my plantar fasciitis. Rolling these things under your feet is amazing. Um, so I would highly recommend picking up some of these. And they're made from cork, which is super cool and sustainable. Um, yeah, like great company, great product. So get yourself some Rology balls. Uh, ditty bag. This is a Dyneema roll top bag from Z Packs. And got a bunch of junk inside. I like to keep it in the outside mesh pocket so I can get to the stuff um, throughout the day if I need something. I've never had this bag leak, um, even hiking in tons of rain and snow and everything else. Um, it's always kept all my stuff dry. So inside I've got a piece of shock cord. Um, this is for like, uh, mainly for chips, honestly, like if I have a bag of Doritos or Fritos or donuts or 
some sort of bag that I've opened and I just want to roll it down and keep it shut. I just keep the shot cord in there just mainly for that. This is a piece of a Nerf bullet. Pretty funny. Uh, I put this over my key to my truck um, when I park at a trailhead just so that the metal portion of my key won't poke a hole in my dry bag or, um, or anything else. I just slide it over the metal tip. Got a Sunto compass. I've got an extra washer for my water filter. Um, great to keep an extra one of those because they can fall out. Um, but if you put a couple of drops of super glue on the washer and stick it back in there, um, I, I've never lost mine, but I do like to have one just in case. Let's see. We got a tube of antifungal cream. This is for um, like athlete's foot, jock itch, anything like that. Um, I find that stuff can be super annoying. And when you're hiking, you know, you're out on trail, you're super dirty, sweaty, hot in the summer, especially, and you're out for three to five days at a time, having just a tiny bit of this can make like a huge difference. One extra bottle cap, sport cap. This is a whistle. This is made by, I think it's a company called Fox. Fox something, I forget. My brother bought me this whistle and at the time it was the loudest whistle in the world. Um, I like to keep this especially for when my kids are with me. Um, whenever I send them off to explore or to hang out and they're gonna be away, I always make sure that one of them has this around their neck. It's got my phone number written on it in Sharpie and it's got dots for the SOS call so that they can remember exactly how they're supposed to blow the whistle if they need to um, use it for SOS and my last name on the back. So yeah, it's kind of like an ID slash safety precaution for them. So it works pretty good and it's, it is ridiculously loud, no doubt. Um, this is the simple stick from Light AF. This is for tying a clove hitch for the bear bag. Got a Swiss Army knife, basic, old school, um, classic knife. It's got the scissors, uh, one blade, toothpick, and tweezers. Earbuds for listening to music, podcasts, whatever. Um, oh, wow, I forgot to take this out. This is uh, an old wine cork. This is actually what I used to roll my feet out before I got the Rology balls. Uh, but I will say it does not work anywhere close to as well as the Rology balls. A couple of foam earplugs. Um, these are great to have around. If you've got somebody who's snoring super loud near you, or you got a super loud storm, you got um, say like tarp flapping, your shelter, whatever. If you have trouble sleeping, um, these weigh nothing and you can just twist them up and pop them in your ears and cut down on that sound. Dental floss for repairs and obviously for flossing your teeth. Um, this is a good thing to have around. Lightweight, great for sewing up some stuff. This is, I guess, what you would consider my first aid slash repair kit. Inside of this little bag, I have few things. I've got um, an alcohol wipe. This can be used um, obviously to sterilize a wound or something like that, but also to wipe off a sleeping pad before you apply a patch. Um, these, this is uh, two different styles of patches for a pad. This is a piece of gear aid, um, stretchy tape. This can be used for all sorts of things. Um, great really to fix a hole in your rain jacket. Um, I've used some to stop a leak in a pad. I've used it for a ton of different things. So Gear Aid makes some, some good tape. These are pre-cut pieces of sport tape. This particular brand is called Rock Tape and this is the H2O tape. It's super sticky and it stays on like multiple days hiking, get it wet, 
you could take showers for days and this stuff, it doesn't come off and it's, and it's super stretchy. Um, and I keep these for blister care. I don't really have many blisters myself, but folks that I hike with sometimes do. So I like to have these so I can deal with that. These are aqua tabs, your little, uh, tabs for treating your water. I keep these in case something happens with my filter and I need to um, still be able to drink water. This will get me at least a few liters um, treated and that way it gives me a little bit of a little bit of reassurance. This is a needle and thread. Needles just stuck through the little piece of cardboard. That's also for repairing gear, sewing things up. This little baggie of uh, Pepto tablets. Um, I like to keep a few of those just in case I have like a, you know, some sort of stomach issues. I've had that in the past on trail. And uh, ever since that trip, I felt like it was worth it to carry a few um, Pepto tablets. Kind of the same thing, a couple of Imodium tabs. And then this little baggie right here is a mix of, I've got a few Benadryl in here. Like I said, I have some allergies, so I carry those. Those are also kind of a like last resort um, for sleeping. If I'm with someone who's having a lot of trouble sleeping and it's becoming a serious issue, they can take a Benadryl and it'll, it makes you drowsy and they'll fall asleep. And then I just got some uh, Advil in there for sore muscles, pain, headache, whatever might happen. And that is it for the ditty bag. Pull everything out. All right. So this is my Appalachian gear hoodie. Um, this thing's great. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, super warm for the weight, super breathable, doesn't stink. Um, I have run in this thing or one of these hoodies literally for months and months, um, over last winter and covered in sweat. I mean, soaking in sweat and didn't wash it for months and it smelled fine. Like it's, it's amazing material. Um, it's got a, a good bit of stretch to it. Um, yeah, the hood's great. It's nice and big and stretchy. And, can't say enough good things about Appalachian Gear Company. All their stuff's great. Food bag from Light AF. Um, this is their flat bottom bear bag. So inside of here, I have my trash bag. Um, I've had this for a few years and I just keep reusing it. I just throw my trash away after my hike and wash it out. Keep on using it and using it and using it. Um, this is my drink bag. And yes, I know I label everything with Sharpie, but I just like to do that. So, so in here, got my spoon, my toothpaste, and my toothbrush. It's a little kids um, bamboo toothbrush um, weighs like 0.1 ounces so and you don't even have to cut it in half and it's that like imagine that um, yeah so the rest of it's just drink stuff and I have a few more um, Ziploc bags just for organizing my food dinner lunch and snacks um, this is a few fire starters. These are wet fire from UST. They're like the size of a little white dinner mint and they burn for about five or six minutes with a good solid flame and they will burn even if they're wet. My rock sack from Light AF. Uh, I've got the cord is in here, um, 50 feet of zing it. And that's what I use to tie up my bear bag. And then my cook kit, which is, uh, this is a Dyneema uh, pot sack from Light AF, 
fits the pot like super, super snug and um, really nice to have. Just keeps everything um, nice and tidy so your lid doesn't come off and it doesn't rattle around inside your pack. So I, I use um, 750 milliliter Tokes titanium pot slash mug. Um, it's big enough that I can cook um, really whatever I need to in the pot if I want. Or I can just boil water and you know pour it into a mountain house meal or some other dehydrated dinner of choice. Got my pot and I have a small piece of uh, an old bandana. Um, I can use this to like wipe something up, but more importantly, I throw it in my pot first. And when my uh, when my fuel cartridge is covered in moisture from uh, Condensation, that just happens when you cook with a stove like this. Um, it keeps everything from getting muddy and nasty and rust in the bottom of your pot. Plus it keeps everything from rattling around. So I put the bandana in first, then I put in my gas canister. Um, I use the BRS stove, titanium, it's very small. Uh, I've been using it for about three years now and no issues whatsoever. It's a great little stove. Costs like 15 bucks on Amazon. Um, and I personally know several people who use the same stove and they love it. So um, great setup to work with the fuel canister. That goes back in here. And then I carry one small mini Bic for lighting everything up. This guy here, and then one more piece of bandana to help keep everything from rattling around. So I just throw everything in there, kind of on top of the of the uh, canister, and that is my cook kit. Everything goes back in here. Getting through some stuff. I need a sip of coffee. This is my shelter of choice. This is the Z-Pax Duplex. Uh, super lightweight. It's like 19 ounces. Sleeps uh, one with tons of space and two comfortably. Um, it is an expensive shelter, but I feel like if you can sleep two people in it, um, you can justify that cost um, a little bit more. I love this shelter. It's super easy to set up. Um, it's a trekking pole shelter. So um, you're saving weight also by not carrying dedicated tent poles. Um, yeah, it's great. Super easy to put up, super easy to pack away. And because it's Dyneema, it doesn't absorb water, so it doesn't get heavy like Sil Nylon. It doesn't stretch like Sil Nylon. It's just all around a great shelter. So D-Pax Duplex. All right, so now we're getting into my pack liner, which is a, pull this down so you can see, this is a just a trash compactor bag. Um, I just made a video about this recently, just kind of showing why I use a trash compactor bag and how well it'll protect your gear. We actually took um, a couple of backpacks this summer and we swam across a river and we had our gear rolled up in a trash compactor bag. And none of our gear inside of the compactor bag got wet. So pretty awesome. Um, and you know, very inexpensive way to keep your stuff protected. So inside of here, I have my Puffy. This is same Puffy I've been using for years. It's like a $30 um, down Puffy jacket that I bought from TJ Maxx, which is like a discount store. It's made by a company called 32 Degrees. Um, it's been awesome. And I know a few other people that have this jacket. Unfortunately, I think they've stopped making the hooded version of this jacket, but you can still find the, the non-hooded version um, on their website and on Amazon. This is my pillow. This is a uh, Sea to Summit Eros Ultralight. Uh, it weighs a little bit over two ounces, super comfortable, 
great pillow. They recently added this, what they call the pillow lock system. I don't know if you can see that. But all it is, they switched the material on this side to like a suede feeling material. And when you purchase this pillow, they give you some uh, Velcro tabs to stick onto your sleeping pad, which you're going to see here in just a second. And that way, your, your pillow literally just sticks to your pad. It's awesome. It's really cool. So this is my sleeping pad that I'll be using this year. I switched up to this pad um, a few months ago. I've been using um, the Uber Light and X Lights um, for a long time, but I actually switched to a large size X Light. I'm six foot two, so having the extra length so my head and feet aren't falling off of the regular size pad was something that I felt like was worth carrying some extra weight. And um, the width is not absolutely necessary with this size pad, but it's been really nice as well because then my arms don't fall off the sides of the pad. So these are the Velcro tabs on the pad here. They have four little smooth Velcro tabs and they stick to the pillow, which is really cool. Let's see if so you just blow it up and then your pillow sticks to your pad. Closed bag. This is a uh, head like bug net from Sea to Summit. I used to use this to keep my pillow on my sleeping pad um, up until a few months ago when I got the, the newer uh, pillow. My dog actually popped my pillow that I've had for about four years. I didn't even know about the pillow lock system. I ordered a new pillow and it came with the Velcro and everything and I that was just a, a cool surprise. But I still use the head net as a stuff sack for my clothes. Obviously if there's bugs, I can use it as a head net to keep the bugs off. So in here, I've got an extra shirt to sleep in. This is just a super lightweight uh, merino shirt that I've had forever. Tights, these are lightweight uh, Nike, Pro something tights. Uh, whenever it's really cold outside, I can throw these on and uh, and I'll hike in them. But for the most part, I generally just use them to sleep. Some of this stuff is gonna be swapped in and out um, depending on the season. So once I get through this, I'm gonna break into some other stuff that I would swap in and out depending on if it's colder, like w almost winter weather versus summer when it's super hot. Um, I would definitely not hike with tights um, in the summer. There's just no need. These are actually the legs from tights. Um, these are some cheap fleece uh, leggings that I bought from Kmart uh, years ago and I cut the legs off and these are honestly like one of my favorite pieces of gear. These things they are super lightweight. They don't even weigh an ounce between the two of them. They're just these long, obviously they're legs, so they're just long tubes of fleece. They're super stretchy. And I use them for uh, like sleep socks. So when it's really cold, I pull them up over my feet, like, you know, three quarters of the way down. And then I pull the other end up and kind of twist it and double it back over my feet. So it's like this double layered, um, sleep sock and then on days when it's really chilly and i'm hiking um, you can actually use these it's kind of crazy but you can use them like gloves so i've got a little hole cut here for my thumb so you just put them on like that and then you pull these guys up over whatever it is you're wearing a uh, jacket or whatnot and then you roll them back like this and this would actually hang up on your jacket. It wouldn't try and drag back quite as much, but you just pull it like that, double it over into your palm, and it makes like this double thick uh, fleece mitt. So, and it, it, honestly, it works really, really well. So it keeps your hands nice and toasty warm. It's multi-purpose um, because you can use it as socks. You can use it as a, you know, fleece mitt. Um, so really, Pretty cool piece of gear. I never would have thought that 
something like that would be one of my favorite things, but it definitely is. This is a uh, light AF beanie. Just got this recently. This thing's great, man. It's uh, really warm. I was hiking recently in a bunch of snow and cold temps, and this was great for keeping my head warm. I believe we're probably getting to the bottom of the pack. Yep. All right. Drag this guy out. That's the last thing in my pack. This is a quilt I just picked up a couple months ago from Noon Attack. Uh, they make custom quilts and this particular quilt is called the 3D quilt. Um, it has a full length zipper. So it's not necessarily a quilt and it's not necessarily a sleeping bag. Um, it's kind of like a hybrid. Because it is does have a zipper, it doesn't normally come uh, with any type of pad attachment system, but Noon Attack uh, does a lot of custom work. So I had them actually sew a few webbing loops along the zipper so that I can use um, a pad attachment system and open this thing up like a quilt and use it in that same way so that it won't you know, fall off my pad and I can keep drafts out. It's rated, it's rated as a comfort rating to 26 degrees, and I've slept in it uh, in 25 degree weather. And that was with a light base layer, um, a buff, like just a lightweight buff around my neck, and then a warm hat. And I had the, the uh, fleece tubes, the leggings, socks, whatever you want to call them. Um, I had those on my feet and I was toasty warm. Yeah, being able to zip up your quilt uh, when it gets down into the like mid twenties, I think it's really nice. Um, I love my Katabatic quilt. That quilt is super warm and it does a great job of keeping out cold air and very little draft, but for me personally, when you start getting into the, like close to the mid twenties, I just like that security of being able to zip things up um, if I want to. So I got in touch with Noon Attack and I'm super pumped with this this quilt. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it's also, it's made with 900 uh, fill power um, down. It's, water resistant down. So it's, it's basically the same, um, you know, materials as my Katabatic, but it's got a full length zipper, super toasty warm. The foot box is great. Um, it's also a differential cut just like my Katabatic. So yeah, this thing is, uh, exactly what I wanted for three season use. So what I'm going to do now is go through a couple of things that I would swap out depending on the weather. Um, this would be my, you know, my overall three season kit, but in the middle of the summer when it's super hot, I'm not gonna carry a 26 degree quilt because it doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna carry uh, the puffy, um, you know, I'm gonna ditch some things and I'm gonna swap some things out. So as far as my sleep system, I would probably get rid of the, uh, the large X-Lite and this quilt, and I would switch to my Vesper quilt and my Uberlite. Um, it's just quite a bit lighter than the other pad. I don't need the extra insulation, um, and it packs down really, really small. Vesper quilt, if you saw the, uh, the videos um, earlier in the series, then you know all about this, but it's 15 ounces. It's warm for me down to right around 40 degrees, so it's a great uh, breaking point for me to get rid of this and swap out to this guy here. So that would be my sleep system. Um, in colder weather, I would actually uh, probably add these guys here, especially if I'm gonna be hiking in snow or something like that. These are seal skins, waterproof socks. I used these recently in West Virginia in some deep snow and they worked really well to keep my feet nice and toasty, toasty warm. These are, I believe they're made by Mountain Warehouse. Um, they're a cheap nylon rain pants 
that we bought before we went to Iceland a few years ago. Um, I never expected them to do as well as they have, but they're just a super simple rain pants. They have an elastic waist. Um, you just pull them up and there's nothing to button. There's not, there's nothing to them at all. Um, the bottom of the pants are just wide enough that I can slide them on and off over my trail runners. I don't need to take my shoes off, which is really cool. Um, I don't use these necessarily for rain a whole lot. Like I would never take these in warmer weather. I would take my rain skirt, but when it gets cold where it's going to be say like, um, during the day while I'm hiking, you know, maybe just above freezing. And then in the evening, it's going to be, you know, twenties to the teens. I would take these instead. They hold in the warmth much better. Um, and they do weigh a little bit more. They're about four and a quarter ounces, I think. But um, yeah, for the additional warmth and everything of having a pair of pants that are gonna shield the wind and the cold, this is definitely what I would switch out to in colder weather. Those are the things I would switch out. Now, uh, the clothing that I would wear while I'm hiking. So this is a new shirt that I've been wearing for uh, maybe two months now. This is a 100% Merino from um, Wooly Clothing. Uh, super comfortable, super soft shirt. Uh, I went with the polo because I like to have some buttons so I can vent a little bit if I need to. Um, it's got a good stretch to it. The sleeves are nice and long. Um, so they're not pulling up off of my wrists. This particular shirt I think is like 190 weight, uh, Merino. So I could probably hike in this, uh, kind of as a, I've worn it as a base layer in colder weather. I think I would be comfortable and not overheat probably hiking, uh, up to the beginning of the summer. And then I would go with something lighter. Um, and then go back to this um, at the end of the summer going into fall. But this has been a great shirt. I've been wearing it constantly, whether I'm hiking or around the house, anywhere. And it doesn't stink. You could wear this thing for like a week straight, sweat in it. I've been trail running in it, everything. And um, it doesn't smell at all. So that's pretty awesome. Nike shorts. Same ones I've been hiking in for like four or five years. Nothing fancy. They're just nylon shorts with pockets um because i do like to walk with my hands in my pockets occasionally talked about this in the previous videos that uh i am trying swift wick socks still like darn tough a lot but i'm gonna try these guys out they just have more of a kind of a fitted compression type of fit and they don't stretch out and get loose um, after multiple days of being wet and then I have Dirty Girl Gators, I wear these all the time, trail running, work, hiking. I usually get about a year to two years out of one pair, and I, I literally wear them almost every day, at least for something, if not two or three things. So super awesome piece of gear and cheap. And they keep all the crud and debris out of your shoes. And then uh, for my shoes, Switched from Lone Peaks to the Hoka One One. Um, oh man, now I forgot what they're called. It'll come to me in a minute. But I've been hiking, trail running. Uh, I recently this is what I wore in the snow on my last trip, um, and these are quite a difference from the Lone Peaks. They have a lot more cushion um, and. They're still very lightweight, but the amount of cushion is, is like crazy difference. Um, and I've, I've really, honestly, I've really enjoyed, um, running in them especially and hiking has been great. The traction on these shoes is pretty good. Um, yeah, I, so far I'm really enjoying them. I also removed the insoles and I've been wearing the, uh, super feet carbon insoles to get a little bit more arch support. Um, I was speaking to a physician about my feet and my uh, 
got some plantar fasciitis going on, like I mentioned, and it was recommended that I go with some more arch support. So this combo has been working out fantastic, but great shoe so far. That'll be my hiking shoe for this year. On my face, Philo shades. Definitely be wearing those for everything. And my hiking poles, like I mentioned in the previous video, I will be using the uh, Tac Niners. They're a Z pole, seven ounces, I believe. And uh, so far, they've been more than strong enough for me and great for setting up my shelter and they're adjustable. So, killer poles. Uh, the base weight for this gear is going to hover like in the summertime when I've got the Uber light and I'm ditching the puffy and, you know, I'm going with my lightest kit for warm weather. Um, I would say it's probably going to be around eight pounds base weight, maybe a little below eight pounds. Um, and then with the colder weather stuff, uh, not like deep winter, but getting pretty cold. Adding in those things that I mentioned, um, I would say I'd probably be around nine and a half pounds, um, somewhere in that range. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this super long, crazy long-winded uh, dive into my gear. Uh, once again, if you have any questions about any of this, please shoot me an email, drop a question in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear some comments anyway about any of this gear and what you guys use and maybe some suggestions, things that might be better um, or, you know, might work better for me for some of these things. Um, I love to uh, hear everybody's input. Um, yeah, I'll have links for all this stuff in the description. And I suppose if you like this video, maybe you could uh, hit the like button, you know, give me a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel. We'll have a lot more stuff coming soon. And that's it. And as always, I'm Scott. This is Motivated by Mountains. I'll see you again soon. Mm. If anyone wants to volunteer to come and like clean all this stuff up, I'd be totally down for that. Come on.